explain. You need it. I've been getting on my BNB and stacking it. Bearing it with EMP and then a metal beat. Thought I got myself a bag before the bull run. Thought it takes a Misha stick it in the bull run. I've been getting on my BNB and stacking it. Bearing it with EMP and then a metal beat. Thought I got myself a bag before the bull run. Thought it takes a Misha stick it in the bull run. I've been getting on my BNB and stacking it. Bearing it with EMP and then a metal beat. How to get myself a bag before the bull run? How to take some Isha stick it in the bull run? I've been getting on my BNB and stacking it. Bearing it with EMP and then a metal beat. How to get myself a bag before the bull run? How to take some Isha stick it in the bull run? What's up, what's up, everybody, and welcome to EMP Money. My name is AJ, I am the team lead here, and this is our live AMA. We come to you every Monday and Thursday at 6.45 p.m. Eastern with all the latest updates of our entire, well, what is now an EMP ecosystem. Uh, we'll talk a lot about that today, for sure. Uh, lots of other updates and maybe some alpha as well. Uh, as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, with the most and fellow team member, LA. LA, how are you today? I'm doing good. Awesome. We had a lot to go over. Again, going to try and make this short and sweet. We've been on an AMA run uh, like no other, so I'm surprised I still have a voice left. Uh, but obviously, we prioritize our own AMAs to give as much info as possible and have a direct uh, line of communication uh, with the team. So, uh, all right. Uh, that being said, before we get started, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, um, our numbers have been awesome lately. Uh, the YouTube channel is growing. All the social media uh, channels are growing. So, please share uh, the word around. Um, again, this is a great way to keep in touch uh, and, you know, invest in your investment by paying attention uh, to what we're doing in the AMAs. Uh, even if you're not not an English speaker, uh, we have a transcript after every AMA um, uh, that does a recap of what the AMA is about. So there's really no excuse to not know uh, what's going on in the ecosystem, uh, even if you just pay attention to these AMAs twice a week. So, uh, all right, awesome. Uh, that being said, we're going to jump right in. Uh, LA, we're going to kick things off with L1 Dex. I know, uh, again, we're, we, we're building an entire ecosystem here. Um, and uh, that was, again, the topic of discussion today, uh, where uh, from now on, we, we not only are going to update people about EMP and EMP Fusion, uh, but L1 Dex and SparkSwap on every AMA. So uh, again, uh, all of that is, is beneficial to our original participants in EMP because uh, all these other protocols will end up feeding the mothership of EMP. Uh, and, you know, all of you should be just as excited about these uh, these partner and, and uh, 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 sister protocols as uh, EMP itself. So, uh, all right, that being said, like I said, L L1X is up first. We had an amazing week of AMAs, videos, and major marketing. Again, uh, another topic of today is our marketing. I mean, we have just gotten started, and the response has been absolutely insane, uh, both on L1 Dex and SparkSwap. And that has had a real effect on bringing more eyeballs back to EMP. And again, uh, we, we made this comparison in the last AMA, but if you think SparkSwap had a successful launch. Just wait until we apply all of this momentum uh, and all the, again, uh, secondary round of marketing to Fusion. I mean, Fusion could be absolutely 
you know, uh, one of the biggest DeFi protocols in existence uh, within just a matter of days. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, LA, again, I don't know. Uh, all of that is a big contribution to what you have been putting out. So uh, I don't want to steal your thunder by any means. But uh, anything you want to add about marketing before we highlight some other uh, uh, bullet points? It's been such a fun ride. And honestly, it's just been so great to see how the marketing that we've been doing for L1 Dex and SparkSwap as well have been bringing in so many people who are so excited and interested. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Bless you. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, have been bringing in so many people who are so excited to find out about EMP now. And so the EMP group is growing. People are asking questions about the tokens, about what's coming with Fusion. They're wanting to read the white paper. They're wanting to attend the AMAs. And so we're seeing all three accounts growing on our social media accounts. We're seeing all three Telegram and Discord accounts growing. And it's just been a lot of upwards momentum. And that's really a great thing to see. It just shows us tangibly that all of our efforts are making a difference. And um, I mean, there's nothing more we could ask for. We're bringing in a lot of great new people because I think the energy we're sending out is a really positive one. And that's what we're bringing in. And so I love it. Yeah, no doubt, LA. And like you said, it's actually uh, tangible. I mean, we we can talk about uh, new followers and and look at numbers go up, you know, uh, on a daily basis. But does that actually translate to, you know, buying pressure on EMP and eShare? And the answer is hell yes. I mean, again, we've seen uh, PEG and eShare uh, recover quite substantially just in the last few days uh, as we've continued to roll things out and people get reacquainted with EMP uh, and, and everything that we're building. So that's really, really exciting uh, moving forward. Uh, and uh, with that, we had an amazing uh, Twitter space as well uh, about L1 Dex earlier this week. Uh, we dropped a ton of alpha in terms of the wallet. Um, uh, again, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the wallet in a second, but uh, that is recorded on Twitter. So make sure you're following our Twitter uh, and can listen to that recording. Uh, but we had over 120 people in there live uh, which is what was our first, I think, uh, or one of the first official uh, Twitter spaces uh, uh, of that channel. And uh, almost 2,000 people have tuned in uh, overall uh, on the recording. So again, just another great way to get the word out uh, uh, and get you know uh, people excited. So uh, we again, speaking of the wallet, uh, we know that all of you are very anxious and excited to get uh, updated info on the wallet. Uh, we made a, an announcement that we uh, had to retract. Uh, we jumped the gun a little bit. Um, again, it's been uh, a little difficult trying to uh, coordinate with L1X themselves. You know, obviously as L1Dex, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, a responsibility to update our own communities, but we don't want to step on the toes of uh, L1X as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces and, uh, you know, it's a team, uh, our, our, both of our teams combined are probably well over 50 people. Uh, and so it's a lot of moving parts that we have to manage, but we will hopefully have a uh, updated um, uh, description of the wallet and, and that claiming process uh, of those of you that got in the pre-sale uh, or the, the private sale. So all that will be really soon. Again, we don't want it to come across as us uh, being delayed. Um, it's just, there has to be a specific process um, and you know, all the data has to be pulled uh, from the chain itself to make sure nobody gets, you know, double credit on, you know, claiming. Uh, we just have to be really uh, careful. So all that will be delivered soon. Again, we promise. Uh, that it will be very clear and concise. And and honestly, you know, until the uh, LP pools and staking uh, pools are, or the nodes are live, there really isn't much you can do with your L1X anyway. Uh, again, uh, it won't be tradable even until uh, the end of the year or maybe a little sooner with the P2P marketplace. Um, but again, I know everybody is anxious. Uh, everybody's excited. We we fully understand that. Um, but please just be patient 
uh, as we want to roll out the correct information uh, in the most, you know, easy to understand way. Um, but that being said, you know, uh, and we talked about this on the Twitter space, uh, we, we all got to, to get an inside look at the L1X wallet, and it is very impressive. Again, I, I admittedly, um, you know, wallets can be a very touchy subject, and we all get stuck in our ways of MetaMask or Robbie or, uh, uh, you know, wallets that we're comfortable with. But uh, I must say that I was really blown away at the uh, potential that the L1X wallet has. So not only is it a better and easier solution, uh, in my opinion, for cross-chain, you know, transfers or uh, eventual swaps through the DEX, uh, but it's just also, uh, you know, the one wallet that, that rules them all. Again, we having a wallet that interacts with EVM and non-EVM chains without having to, you know, switch up an RPC or make sure that, uh, you know, you're on the right network. Like, everything just works seamlessly. And that is a major, major uh, step forward in wallets. Uh, and again, there's way more to it. Uh, some things I can't even uh, talk about publicly um, uh, because it's not on the public roadmap, but it's very promising as we uh, as it rolls out. So just again, be patient. Once you get your hands on the wallet, everything will be uh, a lot easier. And um, you know, we're we're trying to uh, uh, really push the timeline along uh, with L1X. It's just you know, uh, unfortunately some things are out of our control. So. Uh, LA, anything you want to add to that? I know uh, we, we got a little inside peek uh, at the wallet. And uh, again, it's super promising. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Um, I actually had a private call with Cody and he um, took me through a bunch of the features um, while sharing screens the other day. And I had it up um, playing around with it while he took me through different things. And it was pretty exciting. Um, so I think when we are finally um, able to release that information and get everyone um, downloading it, it and everything, you'll be very pleased. Um, it'll obviously be a little bit of a learning curve and a, uh, you know, get out of your comfort zone with MetaMask and Robbie kind of situation. But once you do, you'll be very happy you did. Yeah, I agree 100%. And well, again, I know L1X is planning on putting out a lot of. Um, uh, educational material uh, around the wallet. Uh, we will supplement that with whatever we need to. Uh, again, happy to do a, a walkthrough live here on one of the AMAs. Uh, we can even bring Cody on uh, to, to walk through it with us. So uh, everybody will have a first row, a uh, front row seat to the rollout of that wallet. So, uh, all right, awesome. Again, those are the major updates with L1 Dex. Um, where Jake, uh, D J J from uh, Dex Finance uh, and his crew, um, uh, they're continuing to build out, you know, uh, uh, everything on mainnet. Uh, we have all the SDKs now. Uh, everything is working flawlessly. We released a video as well uh, on the last AMA of the first uh, actual uh, cross-chain swap utilizing the Dex. Um, so everything is working and. Uh, you know, it's that, that proof in the pudding where we had said, we, we talked so highly of the L1X technology, but, uh, you know, the skeptics, and, and rightly so, you know, uh, uh, wanted to see it working. Well, now it's actually working. And that is so promising in terms of the tech uh, and the future of L1X and L1Dex that we can actually, uh, you know, deliver on everything that we said we would be able to. So, uh, it's going to be an amazing next couple of months. Um, uh, again, as we uh, roll out uh, all the features of the DEX, um, we'll we'll start opening up the LP pools, you know, uh, in the next few weeks, uh, sooner if we can, um, and then that allows people to start earning, uh, and that will allow all of you to take advantage of this cross-chain uh, swapping, which uh, not only swapping but this bridgeless. Uh, tunneling as well, and we could see some major adoption in a very short amount of time. So once that all is live, please, again, uh, start preparing now uh, to share that everywhere uh, far and wide. So uh, the more people that know about this, the better. Uh, and it, it is literally a, uh, a cheaper, safer, uh, and faster option 
than every other option in crypto at the moment. So uh, it will be a very easy easy sell uh, for 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 people that want to want to use it. So uh, all right, uh, anything else about uh, the Dex LA or anything that we have coming up? Uh, I know we have a few more AMAs uh, later this week as well. But yeah, anything else before we Ooh, move on? Yeah. Yeah, just um, that we had a, a really exciting one come out today that was a podcast interview. And uh, AJ and Jake got interviewed on the 100X podcast. And so that's actually available on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. So that brings us a different kind of exposure, some new audiences, and people can listen to it in their car. Um, if they're just searching for the word crypto on, you know, the search bar of their podcast app on their phone, um, they could just stumble upon it, you know. So um, definitely share that out, um, even to your, as AJ would say, crypto curious friends. Um, that one was about L1 Dex. So um, it's, it was a really good one. I watched the first about third of it so far, but uh we have it shared in all of our groups go give it some love and share it out and um we're really excited about that one yeah we had two really good ones come out we also had um the ama with matt bills come out today as well and that was a really good one too yeah no doubt and we we try to as we are doing these amas we try to drop uh, a little bit of of you know alpha or easter eggs uh, in every AMA that's different from the rest. Obviously, a lot of the core information is the same. Uh, and I know, you know, listening to that 20 times may get a little bit uh, repetitive, but that also helps you learn, uh, you know, the ins and outs of the protocol. But yeah, to, to LA's point, uh, the, the interview we did with Matt Bills, we did a really deep dive uh, on some things in the middle of that AMA that we really hadn't talked about on any other AMAs. So definitely go check that one out. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Um, and yeah, the podcast was super successful. Uh, Matt and Caesar, the, the two co-hosts uh, of that are, are, are D5 veterans. Uh, they, they brought a lot of insight uh, again and, and, and great uh, praise uh, in a non-biased manner uh, of what L1 Dex can do. So yeah, it, it is worth your time uh, to listen to all the AMAs um especially if you're you know uh want to be uh as up to date as possible so uh all right awesome uh i guess we'll move on to spark swap now uh again continuing to uh absolutely crush it uh the momentum has been insane um we're just over 11 days now since it launched um with about 8 million in tvl uh uh 1.9 million in liquidity uh, and, and just that same amount, uh, if not slightly more, in market cap, which, uh, again, uh, liquidity equaling the market cap of a token uh, is, is unheard of. I mean, I can count maybe two or three times um, that I've ever seen that. So, uh, uh, and, and, you know, obviously TVL is a great metric, but the real metric of a healthy protocol is deep, deep liquidity. And uh, to have the liquidity that we have uh, has just been uh, quite amazing, uh, to be honest. So uh, again, uh, even with a little bit of a pullback today, you know, uh, that's to be expected. Again, we don't really like to talk about price uh, or speculating on that. Uh, with protocols like the yield farm uh, and even at EMP, you, you, you're, you make your money through the yield, not the token price going up. Uh, so that's a really uh, key concept. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we love it when uh, the, the, the token price uh, is stable or has been going up, uh, which again, over the last week, uh, we, we were in an uptrend for sure. Um, but uh, don't get discouraged, you know, when you see price fluctuate uh, because yield is what matters in uh, these sort of protocols. So, and again, we're still so early. We have the bridge coming um, uh, a little bit uh longer on that i know i had said hopefully we'd have it out this week um but we we you know as we've said all along uh that traditional bridging uh model can be uh, uh an attack vector and we want to make sure that we are absolutely bulletproof um before ever you know uh just saying all right you know 
let's let's run with it. <laughs> we have to, uh, you know, dot dot our I's and cross our T's uh, ten different times. So, um, uh, so everything's looking really good. Um, again, just to clarify, uh, it, it's the final testing before we go live with the bridge. Uh, over 32% of the circulating supply is locked up in Sparkler. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, Sparkler has been paying uh, unbelievable. Uh, again, averaging between three and four and a half percent daily uh, on the maximum stakes. Uh, you know, again, that's based on volume as well. So the more people that are getting in and out of the farms, uh, uh, that, that could double or triple uh, overnight. Uh, so again, remember, APR is an average, uh, and we're working on ways to better calculate uh, the APR and sparkler as well. But uh, it, it's very promising. And, you know, uh, obviously, uh, the bridge will generate a ton of fees uh, that will go back to feeding sparkler. And, you know, those that are, uh, are taking profit through sparkler rather than dumping uh, the token outright will have a much longer uh, uh, way of getting paid through the protocol. So uh, we'll talk about that in a bit here. But um, the community is growing unbelievably fast. Uh, LA, you want to comment on uh, DBank uh, and, and other social medias for uh, uh, SparkSwap? We've been, again, killing it. For sure. Um, we're already in the top 100 on DBank. Um, we ha- I haven't even had a chance to post uh, su- uh, that much of uh, our progress yet um, on there. So um, when, when we get more posts up there, it's going to start growing even faster. Um, our Twitter is growing so fast. We're already uh, a brand new account over um, well, we switched over the old impulse account, but it didn't have uh, many people on there yet at all. But we're already over a thousand followers on there in just over a week. Um, I checked out our analytics the other day, and already in September, which is we're in the seventh, we've had over I think uh, I forget what they call it uh, interactions um post interactions or something but we had had 40,000 already in the first five days of September because I checked it two days ago post engagement that's bullish I love it impressions they call it here it is so we had had uh we had had 40,000 40,000 in the first five days of September and we had already had um we had already had like 300 new followers in the first five days of September too. So really bullish. Our accounts are growing really fast. Um, I know that this is all really working because um, when we first started this uh, a couple weeks ago, not even a couple weeks ago, we had to be the ones to reach out to people to get them to cover us. But now they're starting to come to us. Like, people that we really want to be on with so that's a really good shift and we're really excited about that and so we have some some more stuff coming up next week that uh is the result of that we're really excited to continue getting on videos getting on amas being in call groups and it's going to keep coming maybe not at the exact same pace because uh both aj and i might die if we do that yeah yes <laughs> exactly oh we need a bit of a break right la but yeah our our uh our stamina is unlike any any other project but <laughs> there is a limit that's for sure yeah but um yeah we're gonna continue the coverage for all the projects and um keep building because we're we got some amazing momentum going yeah, no doubt. Well, and like Ella said, some incredible influencers. We really uh, have gotten a very warm welcome from a lot of the Pulse and Hexican uh, communities. Uh, again, uh, a lot of them have been super supportive. Uh, I've had personal DMs with uh, uh, Crypto Coffee, uh, and you know he he's been super supportive. Hopefully, going to get more uh, one on one with him as well. Uh, Joe Paris. Uh, over 350,000 
Subs uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Joe and I go way back, actually. One of my first crypto friends. Uh, it's funny. It's a small world. But he uh, he did some great coverage for us uh, on, on uh, again, SparkSwap. Uh, hopefully some other coverage. Uh, he's done some coverage on L1X. Uh, and we'll be doing coverage on L1Dex uh, as well. So that was a big feather in our cap uh, as far as numbers of the biggest uh, influencer so far. Uh, but yeah, like Ella said, a lot of uh, Pulse and, and Hex specific uh, uh, channels uh, we're, we're starting to get some great feedback from. So, uh, all right, that's everything in terms of marketing. Uh, again, uh, the, the train just keeps on rolling with that uh, and more and more coming. So uh, one thing else too I wanted to mention is our audit. So we got our audit back from OX Guard or OX Guard um, and uh, we passed everything uh, with flying colors. There was a total of three high severity uh, you know, potential issues. We completely fixed uh, two of them, but the third one is a little bit more complicated um, than, than it appears on the surface. So uh, I'm just going to read what I wrote uh, in SparkSwap uh, announcements. You can read this as well. Um, uh, but just to clarify, in terms of the OX Guard audit, there was one more remaining high severity assessment that we wanted to fully address in the vein of our unwavering transparency. They pointed out an edge case where if we were to disable PulseX rehypothecation, it would break the standard user level emergency withdrawal function for the rehypothecated pools. This is standard in MasterChef yield uh, farm code, but not fully relevant with ours because of the addition of rehypothecation. Uh, what this means, again, that's a little bit wordy, uh, but what this means is basically we had to leave this option open to have the flexibility to update or add the PulseX rehypothecation farms without needing to literally relaunch the protocol every time. In no way does it compromise the safety or custody of your LP in those specific pools. You will always be able to withdraw your tokens as you wish. As soon as we uh, move to our own LP pools and begin to operate as an actual DEX, uh, uh, this ability will be irrelevant anyway. Um, so now you can participate in pure confidence. So uh, again, uh, it, it, the issue, potential issue would be trying to emergency withdraw your funds on the rehypothecated pool, uh, but you'll always be able to just withdraw through um, the contract itself. Uh, the emergency withdrawal function is if the you know uh, if the the math were to break or uh, there would have been some sort of issue, uh, you're able to withdraw without or without your rewards. Uh, but you're always able to just withdraw directly from uh, the contract. So even if our front end, uh, which is the website, went down, uh, many other community members uh, would be able to spin up a a, a user interface uh, uh, for uh, SparkSwap, or again, you can interact uh, directly on chain um, by calling uh, some of those functions um, just directly through the contract. So again, just wanted to clarify that um, it, it is technically still open, but it's only open because it's beneficial to the protocol and there really is no security risk. Uh, and, and at the very end there, it said uh, it'll be irrelevant completely when we start operating as an actual DEX. So again, over the next few months, we'll be moving uh, all the LP pools to our own LP. Um, again, right now we live on top of Pulse X, um, but once we start having our own LP, then we truly become a decentralized exchange. Uh, and that's the next phase uh, of what SparkSwap will be. Uh, you know, and, and then we start weaning off of uh, that inflationary model as well. So uh, again, uh, all this is part of the, the long-term plan and uh, will be implemented uh, as, as soon as possible. So, uh, all right, uh, hopefully that uh, clarifies everything with that. Let me go back to my notes. Uh, LA, anything you want to add to that while I pull up the notes again? Hang on. Just in case you're wondering where on the site to find the audit, in the left-hand side, there's an info tab, and that's where you can find the docs, the audit, and the chart. Perfect. All right. Yep. Uh, uh, all right. So, again, uh, we talked about all the men's and coverage. Uh, even at AMA today with Bruiser's calls, um, there was 60,000 
uh, members in that Telegram. Um, so a ton coming uh, uh, for sure. So, uh, all right, I'm going to walk through our diagrams next uh, and really what makes SparkSwap different. So give me one minute while I pull this up on YouTube. All right, so uh, we share this graphic a lot. Uh, there's two, uh, technically two different uh, um, diagrams out there. I'm going to focus on the farm uh, one today, uh, but there's also a pool uh, strategy as well, which I'll, I'll uh, elaborate on. But this is really what makes SparkSwap different. Um, there's actually two things. The first thing is that rehypothecation that I just mentioned uh, in terms of the audit. Um, what that means is that we're able to actually uh, apply the LP that we receive uh, to the native uh, Pulse X um, uh, 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 farms. And we're rewarded in ink tokens or uh, incentive token uh, as well. So that incentive token is then uh, sold uh, and, and, go and put into the sparkler uh, in, in a 50-50 split of, uh, of um, Spark and PLS. So I know a lot of you that may be chart watching, uh, every now and then you see a bunch of little tiny buys uh, on, on Spark. Um, you can literally see it in the chart. Uh, that is the, the buyback happening. So uh, again, all of this is on chain. Um, uh, all, all, everybody can see it happening in real time. Um, and what happens is uh, through Sparkler, which again, well, first of all, let me just clarify that rehypothecation, uh, because we're earning ink, that is real yield for the protocol where we're not having to rely on, you know, new users or uh, other fees that are generated. Uh, as long as we're earning from those pools, that ink reward token uh, is, again, a revenue stream for the protocol. So that's very different. No other, or very, very, very few. Uh, I can list about maybe two uh, that I've heard of that do rehab authentication um, uh, on AMMs. And that, again, is part of our secret sauce uh, for sure. So, uh, and we're definitely the only one on uh uh, on Pulse. So, uh, and then the other part is uh, the the Sparkler. So the Sparkler is also our secret weapon uh, and what makes this protocol so different and sustainable. Uh, and that is by rewarding all of you, uh, the protocol fees for being involved in Sparkler. And the longer that you stake your Spark, uh, the more shares that you earn and the shares are what determine how much of the uh, rewards that you get. So the idea is that you want to stake, uh, again, not financial advice, uh, but the idea would be that you would stake as long as possible. Uh, that is 10 years. And again, this is essentially burning your tokens. Um, but by doing that, you're able to yield uh, forever uh, or as long as the protocol is, is generating fees. So uh, it is a risk reward you know, decision that you have to make, but uh, at, at three or four percent a day, you know, you can make up your uh, your fees uh, or your the the not your fees, but the uh, the 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 token value that you've burned. You can make that up in a matter of a month, uh, and then now every every month after that uh, is pure profit that you never would have gotten had you just sold your spark uh, to begin with. So again, this is really healthy for the protocol as well because it essentially, uh, uh, you know, reduces the inflation uh, on Spark because people are burning it. So uh, that's really, really important. And uh, in terms of uh, an optimal strategy, um, you know, you could create LP, um, the Spark PLS LP, put it in the farm. Uh, that will then start earning you uh, actual Spark. Uh, that Spark can then be uh, deposited into Sparkler, um, and then that will produce you more Spark PLS LP. Uh, then you could take half of that and put it right back in the farm uh, to earn even more, and then maybe take the other half uh, and split that, um, where you know you you, you uh, have Spark and PLS. You keep the PLS as profit, uh, and then put the Spark back into the Sparkler, and this allows you to earn without ever having to sell the native asset. So, you know, we, we're, never, we're never advocating for people not to take profit, 
uh, you know, taking profit is very healthy. That's why we're all here in, in DeFi. Uh, but it's how you take profit that is the important part. And again, the less selling pressure on Spark, uh, the higher the price of Spark goes, um, or even just maintains, you know, around this dollar level, uh, that is, you know, very consistent APR in all the farms so and pools. Uh, and then the same applies to the pools. Uh, again, uh, it's a different graphic, but uh, very similar. Uh, I don't have it up right now, but uh, the pools, you would do the same thing. Uh, you could deposit uh, ETH or, or DAI or, or, uh, or Pulse directly, uh, wrapped Pulse. Uh, and then, you know, the in and out fees are a little bit higher because you're not exposed to any uh, impermanent loss. Um, and then, you know, the, the spark that you earn, you put it into Sparkler, and then you rinse and repeat uh, that that uh, loop, or, or so to speak, of, of how you treat your LPs. So again, we, we have laid it all out for you. Uh, we're not here to tell you what to do. We're not here to convince you. Uh, again, we're not here to give financial advice, but we are here to give the optimal strategy of what is best for the protocol and potentially best for you as the investor as well. So, uh, all right, LA, anything you want me to elaborate on or uh, clarify with this? Yeah, maybe how bullish it is that so much of the circulating supply is locked up in Sparkler. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, I don't know if Vino can come on uh, voice today, but uh, Vino has been absolutely killing it on uh, these, these uh, uh, statistics. So, Vino, are you there, bro? Oh, maybe, maybe not. I put him on the spot. Uh, you have to unmute, Vino. You should be okay. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just continue. But uh, feel free to interrupt me uh, down the road here. But uh, yeah, I mean, Vino uh, has pointed this out. A lot of other community members. So 32% of the circulating supply is locked up inside of Sparkler. And uh, that essentially means, you know, we have uh, we've reduced inflation, you know, by, by 32%. And uh, that's massive, especially this early on. And really, in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, yes, our emission is, you know, uh, inflationary. But compared to other protocols, it's pretty conservative. I mean, we're, we're only emitting 80,000 spark a day, um, uh, which is about one spark uh, per second. But uh, that's half the emissions uh, of some other, uh, you know, AMMs uh, that we've seen on Pulse and and even uh, other other places. So, you know, we've already tried to reduce the inflation uh, as much as we can. Um, and, and the reason that we start with an inflationary token is because we are able to get insane uh, APR, uh, you know, in these farms, which attracts people in. Uh, and then, you know, over time, we become more and more healthy, more and more sustainable by reducing that inflation uh, and then eventually getting rid of it altogether. So again, uh, those that are paying attention, uh, a spark will eventually become deflationary uh, and have a hard uh, a hard cap uh, on uh, you know the supply. Um, and when that happens, you know we could see the spark token uh, absolutely moon. Uh, again, I don't usually talk about price and you know uh, uh, I'm not gonna overhype people to get in now, but over time, again, uh, becoming non-inflationary uh, is very, very healthy. And then we just, we work on real yield, just like the sparkler, uh, even for the other LP pools, uh, uh, rather than, you know, rewarding an inflationary token. So uh, there's a lot in the works with that. Again, that's more of a, a six month, you know, to one year plan. Um, but, you know, if we can implement it sooner, uh, we will. And those that are selling Spark now uh, could have to buy it back uh, for even more than what they sold it for uh, if they want to get part of the, the protocol fees. And that will be even more powerful when we uh, tie it into uh, L1 DEX. So, uh, again, uh, this is the last point I wanted to make was, uh, you know, Spark Swap and L1 DEX. Uh, are are, are going to be tied together as well. So uh, when interoperability is granted to Pulse Chain, again, uh, we're lobbying for that. I don't have any insider uh, info. It may it may not happen, uh, um, but I would I would venture to say that it will eventually. 
um uh, but then we have a partner swap uh, or partner decks on pulse ready to roll that we can feed the volume to from l1 x or l1 decks so again it's all part of the synergy uh, or the ecosystem that we're building and that will do wonders for additional volume on spark swap and l1 decks so it's literally a win-win uh uh when that happens so uh and again you know uh, emp benefits from all of this so you know part of the fees from l1 decks and and spark swap will go back to feed fusion uh uh you know uh, uh i think a lot of people are finally starting to get positive uh, about the direction of emp again um you know the groups are, are growing uh lots more interest uh learning about the protocol i know Somebody had said, let's do another uh, deep dive on Fusion. Uh, so we can definitely try to arrange that in an upcoming AMA. Uh, for those of you that don't really know about what Fusion is, we can go through it all again. Uh, LA and I made a joke on the last AMA. Uh, Fusion is essentially the sparkler on steroids. So uh, again, uh, we can we can make that comparison when we, when we do a deep dive on it. But... Uh, just very positive news uh, all around. So uh, we're we're uh, we're making it happen for sure. So all right, LA. Any anything you want to add to that, or you want to move into Q and A? Go ahead. Not too much to add. There's just a lot of exciting momentum. Um, we continue to eat any dips very quickly, and that's a really good sign. And um, the the um, community continues to all rally behind each other and the protocol so that's another really good sign and um we're just going to keep building so yes 100 percent. all right some questions so the first one i'm not sure if we can answer or if we'll have to um, relay this to the l1x team but um will there be test coins or tokens to play with um, in the L1X wallet? Yeah, so the answer is uh, no, because there'll be real tokens. So uh, obviously L1X itself, uh, you'll be able to see it in your wallet, but you won't be able to transfer or trade uh, with it. Um, uh, so that until the end of the year. Uh, but as far as like BNB or Ethereum, I mean, you will be able to uh, ascend tokens from wallet to wallet um, uh, and utilize that cross-chain uh, interoperability uh, even now. So again, uh, that's exciting. Now, you won't be able to bridge or uh, or do the cross-chain swaps because uh, we have to have the liquidity uh, in the DEX. But um, as far as like just sending, uh, you know, uh, from BNB to BNB, uh, different wallets uh, on the same chain, uh, that will be uh, accessible uh, in the wallet. I think they, they L1X released a video today uh, uh, that, that showcases uh, this. It's on their Twitter. I'm sure it's on Discord as well. Uh, but yeah, that'll that's a great little uh, teaser uh, to what the wallet will be. It's about a two minute video uh, with their community uh, managers. So uh, yeah, does that answer LA? Was that the question? Yep, yeah, okay, for sure. Awesome. Um, another one. Why wouldn't all protocols with AMMs and farms be rehypothecating their non-native farms? Is there any downside to doing so? Seems like it should be a no-brainer. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that uh, that is the crazy part. It is a no-brainer. You know, I think that people, the reason people don't do that is because, you know, a lot of these AMMs are just, uh, you know, copy and paste uh, developers. Uh, or Fiverr developers, like, you know, a developer that you would hire for, you know, a hundred bucks an hour, uh, not, not an actual professional. Uh, and, and that is the, the answer, I think. I think uh, a lot of people don't know how to, to uh, implement that rehypothecation. Uh, our devs are amazing, um, the best in the industry, um, and they're able to, to work the code uh, the way that we need it to. Uh, but yeah, it's literally free money. So uh, any any AMN that doesn't rehypothecate, uh, they're they're totally uh, leaving money on the table. And you know you just need to make sure it's a, a competent developer um, because uh, you know uh, if it's not done right, uh, there is potential you know to to not have access 
to those tokens or you know a, a lot can go wrong uh with rehypothecating but uh we're 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 doing it and again it's working flawlessly uh i looked at the numbers today um i think we're generating over two thousand dollars a day uh just on ink uh rewards so again as as we grow uh that that could be much more uh as well and that's direct buying pressure on uh on spark and pls awesome all right another one how do you determine when we transition from pls decks pls x decks um to our own and can you explain how that correlates with transitioning to a non-inflationary or deflationary spark token yeah no doubt another killer question so uh i don't really have a a uh, a definite answer to that. Um, it'll be dependent on, you know, the APRs. If we start seeing the APRs fall off too much, then that would speed up the process. You know, if we're still able to maintain uh, very healthy APRs uh, while we continue to build, you know, uh, uh, a community, um, then then we have a little more time to work with. But uh, it'll probably be a gradual process. So I think, you know, obviously leaving the rehypothecated farms as long as possible um, uh, is smart. Um, it'll really just depend on the UI. So I think that we have a way that we'll be able to start transitioning to uh, our own uh, DEX LP um, and, and not have it be something that the, the user uh, has to worry about on the front end. So uh, a great example of this would be uh, pancake swap with their V1 and V2 and now V3 concentrated liquidity, uh, it can get really confusing because uh, even though you're providing the same LP, uh, if you're not on the right version, that LP doesn't show up. So uh, cool. we have to be really careful with that uh, because again, new new users uh, could get really confused uh, really quickly. Uh, and we get a thousand you know, messages about uh, why did my LP disappear uh, and yada, yada, yada. So I think that we're able to do it on the front end um, in, a, in a little more of a seamless way. Uh, we're, we're working through that right now um, uh, with the dev teams. Um, but again, I mean, worst case scenario, uh, it would just be like a day that we announce, you know, all the farms are switching over. Then you have to withdraw your LP uh, and then submit to the new LP um, and have an event around that. Um, but if we can make it work, you know, uh, with the front end alone, uh, where people aren't confused, then we can potentially do both. So, uh, and and why that's important to the Spark LP uh, or the Spark token um, is that again that will coincide with the move to non-inflationary because if we own our own LP. Uh, we get even more fees from, you know, the swaps and potential internal uh, arbitrage between those LP pools. And again, that, that could be a revenue stream way beyond any rehypothecation uh, uh, that we're getting now. So, you know, uh, again, uh, that could be literally thousands of dollars a day uh, or tens of thousands of dollars a day, depending on our volume. And uh, then we become an actual DEX, which uh, again, uh, that would be a very, very big uh, feather in our cap for Pulse because you know uh, we could be the second largest uh, DEX other than Pulse X uh, on, on Pulse. I mean, even now, uh, according to DeFi Llama, we're the third largest project on Pulse uh, at the moment, which again, is just mind blowing. So uh, we're, we're, we're definitely getting momentum uh, and adoption very quickly. So, all right, hopefully I answered all of that. Amazing. <laughs> yes, totally. All right, we got one more from Vino who says he was not available to talk. Um, no worries, Vino, right now, brother. Shout out to Vino, he's been really helping uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and yeah, I know a lot of you uh, enjoy his banter in the telegram so yeah shout out to the 3650 squad yes totally <laughs> um when is spark Sw spark swap exchange eligible <laughs> I, can I cannot speak i'm sorry eligible to trade tokens that are on pulsex 
V2 liquidity pools. Yeah, so again, that would be part of this transition uh, that I just thought about for 10 minutes. Um, you know, not only would it be our own LP, um, but if we can, again, do it in a way that is not too confusing for the, uh, the you know, front end user, uh, then yeah, we could potentially not only have the rehypothecated farms uh, on PulseX, but also the V2 farms uh, on PulseX that uh, help buy and burn PulseX, uh, as well as our own LP. So, you know, we may have a situation where we're able to do all three. Um, we're just, we just got to get through the actual uh, nitty gritty of coding. Um, you know, and, and if it doesn't work out, then we would, we would not have any V1 or V2 uh, pools uh, from PulseX. You know, we would just have our own versions uh, of those uh, on, on SparkSwap. So, you know, uh, we're not looking to really compete with uh, PulseX. We're, we're looking to, you know, be another option uh, uh, for people that want to earn real yield through having a piece of our protocol. So again, a great example would be Uniswap and SushiSwap. You know, uh, SushiSwap uh, is uh, a great uh, protocol that, that does very, very well. Um, and they're not the big dog, you know, Uniswap is still the big dog, but Sushi, again, uh, is very profitable and uh, an amazing name in the space. Uh, so we, we can absolutely be that here on Pulse. For sure. One thing I did forget to mention um, and write on our notes, um, we did submit for um, our listings on both CoinGecko and uh, CoinMarketCap, just to let you guys know, um, at the same time as our DeFi Llama. So our DeFi Llama is up now, like AJ mentioned. Um, we are also working on getting all of the um, introduction the socials, the audit, everything added to um, Dex tools. So all of that stuff is just going to bring more eyes and attention to us. Um, some of those take, you know, a little bit extra time, but we're on it and we're working on getting all those up. So as soon as we see the listings go up, we'll post the links and let you know. Yeah, no doubt. And we have a few surprises too. I know uh, we're working on a, a, a fun little promo video. Uh, uh, again, there's a lot in the works that we're we're still doing, um, and you know now is the time that we rely on a lot of the community. I mean, we we've done some really heavy lifting here in the beginning, uh, but uh, you as a community, uh, I mean, if you if there's an influencer or you know uh, a Pulse Maxi or you know uh, a Hexican that you think would really love what we're doing at SparkSwap, uh, tell them about it. You know, get them in touch. With us, obviously, don't be annoying uh, or, or you know, disrespectful. Uh, there's an art uh, to shilling, for sure. Uh, uh, you don't just want to post, you know, uh, in, in random groups and get banned. But, you know, take the time to reach out. Uh, maybe watch a few of their videos and comment on their videos without ever talking about SparkSwap. Uh, and then maybe throw it in there, you know, uh, a few videos in. Uh, and, and have them reach out. So uh, everybody can do their part in helping. Uh, obviously, that means, you know, we're not uh, we're not giving up, you know, responsibility of, of pushing the project. But uh, having the community really step up uh, is, is super helpful. And again, I mean, you know, yeah, great examples. They've already had two major connections uh, just from community members alone. So uh, it really does work uh, for sure. So, uh, all right, awesome. Uh, any other questions, LA? Nope, I think we are good. Um, there was a couple more in the Spark Swap group, but it looks like they just got answered because everyone is amazing in there and uh, helps each other out. So I love it. Amazing, cool. I think I see one more here. Uh, is it correct that Sparkler uh, uh, locked for seven, 10 years? is paying about 4% a day. So yeah, I, I don't want to get caught up on an actual percentage a day um, uh, because obviously uh, APR is, is variable, but uh, you know, based on the historical data, it's been anywhere from, you know, three and a half to four and a half percent daily. And that is solely dependent on how many people are in Sparkler, uh, how long they're locking their stakes for, and the amount of fees that the protocol generates. 
So uh, one day, like today maybe, uh, the, the in and out fees are a lot less. Uh, therefore, the APR, you know, maybe maybe 2%. But tomorrow, there may be a big whale that goes into the ETH farm uh, or the, the ETH pool. Uh, and then, you know, the APR jumps to like 6 or 7%. So again, APR is an average. And, uh, you know, mark my words, you can clip uh, this quote, but APR will eventually go down. I mean, everybody needs to be prepared for that. But uh, the longer that we can uh, sustain, uh, the better it is for everybody. And again, you know, being locked up in Sparkler entitles you to all the platform fees from here on out. So the bridge, you know, this arbitrage that I mentioned, I mean, there's a ton of ways to generate revenue uh, uh, for Sparkler. Uh, even, you know, even other games uh, or, uh, or, or, or dApps that feed Sparkler. I mean, again, we, we have a lot in the works. Uh, we only talk about maybe 10% of what's actually happening uh, on these AMAs. But yeah, the, that is, uh, again, not financial advice. And don't rely on 4% a day uh, forever. Just rely on the fact that you are now entitled to uh, uh, basically an, a part of ownership of SparkSwap. If you want to own a part of SparkSwap, you need to be in Sparkler uh, as long as you possibly can, uh, locking up uh, for sure. So, uh, all right, great, great uh, question at the end. Um, is that anything you want me to add to that, LA? No, um, yeah, just uh, it'll never be exactly the same to the dot two days in a row because it's dependent on human action and you know people depositing and withdrawing from the pools and the farms and all of that and the fees generated from those actions and so like aj mentioned some days all of that is going to happen more than other days so some days we're going to earn slightly more in sparkler and some days we're going to earn slightly less and it's all about kind of maintaining an average and that's what we're displaying in order to, for you to um, figure out more or less what you're going to be earning. Yeah, no doubt. And, and one more comment on this. So the way that this is designed is also really important because, you know, when the APRs do start going down, which, again, I don't want to ever hear anybody uh, try to uh, clip uh, my quote and say, you know, Sparkler was supposed to pay 4% forever. Uh, you know, that's not at all what we're saying. So as the APRs go down, you know, maybe some people do exit the pools and the farms. Um, uh, and when that happens, that is an entirely new wave of fees that is generated that makes Sparkler go bananas uh, and pay out incredibly well. Uh, and then therefore, uh, people are then incentivized to actually go into Sparkler again uh, because the fees are, are so paying out so well. Uh, and then that uh, boosts APRs all over again. And then people will re-enter the pools because Spark is now uh, you know on an uptrend again uh, and APRs are actually going up. So it, we could see this, this uh, ebb and flow of um, uh, people entering and exiting the protocol. Uh, but at the end of the day, no matter how many people enter and exit, that is just more and more fees that are generated for Sparkler. So again, it's designed uh, very differently than what we have seen in any other uh, AMM, for sure. Awesome. Well, I think that wraps us up. All right, awesome. Well, we just made it right in an hour. Uh, man, we're getting good at this, LA. Uh, literally yep. within 30 seconds here. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a great, a great AMA as usual. Um, again, you know, no updates on Fusion in terms of development, but um, uh, right now the bridge uh, is our number one priority. Uh, and then again, after that's out, um, you know, we we hope to have Fusion out shortly after that. Um, uh, we're in the final stages, and again, hopefully everybody. We'll be just as excited uh, about Fusion. You can take some of your gains uh, from SparkSwap and get ready for, for Fusion. Uh, again, not financial advice, um, uh, but uh, all the uh, attention, again, after Spark and, and L1 Dex uh, will be fully on Fusion 
uh, and the EMP ecosystem all over again. So uh, we're almost there. Appreciate everybody's patience. Um, again, we'll do a deep dive on Fusion uh, over the next few AMAs. Um, uh, we'll bring on Cody for an update on the wallet uh, and a lot of other uh, info as well. So, uh, all right, that being said, LA, any final words before we sign off? Go ahead. You're all absolute rock stars. We love you, and we'll see you on Monday. All right. I love it. Short and sweet. Uh, could not agree more. Again, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you know, uh, numbers have been steadily growing. Uh, all the ad revenue from our partner uh, uh, program at, at, at YouTube goes to support uh, our ecosystems. So uh, make sure that you, again, are, are helping the algorithm uh, and, and doing your part. So, uh, all right. Uh, good night. Good day. We'll see you all next Monday, 7, I'm sorry, 6.45 p.m. Eastern. Bye-bye.